With the release of Intel's latest 12th gen CPUs came their Z690 chipset used on the most powerful boards featuring enough PCIe lanes to finally solve the traffic jam around LA. But not everybody wants to have that kind of power or wants to pay the price tag for that board. This is where Intel's B660 chipset comes into play, which allows to keep way more affordable prices by specking down everything a bit. Meet ASRock's budget-oriented consumer Intel 12th gen board, the B660 Steel Legend. So this is ASRock's Steel Legend version using one of Intel's B660 chipsets. But before we begin with the overview of the board, a quick recap about what we are actually losing when switching from a Z690 powerhouse to a B660 Duracell battery. To cut it short, everything a bit. Sure, we would still have LGA 1700 sockets on there, which allows us to use any of the available uh, 12th gen uh, Intel CPUs, but at the same time, we are losing any possibility of overclocking it. And this is really important. Let's say you want to go with a 12900K, very good idea, great performance, and it allows to be overclocked. But you can do that. What's the point of having an overclockable CPU? if the platform you are using it on does not allow you to do it. And this basically sets the stage what should and should not be used with a B660 board. And the rules are pretty easy. Are you going with a 12th gen CPU with a K in the name, um, which just means overclock, then go with the Z690. Are you going with a locked CPU like a 12900, 12700, 12600 and so on, non-K, go for a B660 board. You will not be using the overclocking feature anyway. Of course, there are more differences and more side cases. I mean, PCIe lanes and stuff, not everybody needs an overclockable CPU, but they need way more lanes for, I don't know, M.2 drives, whatever, but there are more, more stuff. But for average consumer thoughts, Z690 overclockable, B660 non-overclockable. And that's basically the most important difference and pretty much my buying guide for these things. Sure, there will be a bunch of other differences like slightly less PCIe lanes, SATA, and USB ports, and, and surprisingly enough, uh, no RAID support for whatever reason. But all of these little downgrades can easily be grouped by saying you are going for a budget board with a budget chipset. Sure, it is not going to be as powerful as the real deal. But okay, with the 30 second Z690 versus B660 recap out of the way, let's finally get a closer look at ASRock's B660 Steel Legend. Let's start with the I.O. Using the usual camouflage style shield that Steel Legend boards usually come with, the B660 version grades us with a 7.1 audio jack situation, including an optical port. Further up, we are looking at a total of 6 USB Type A ports, 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1, and 2 USB 2.0s at the very top. Additionally, we also got a little USB C 3.2 Gen 2 port. In the back. In case you are planning to use the iGPU that comes on those new Intel chips, ASRock provides us with a display port and a HDMI port. Then to make fun of the past, in case you are planning to use your PC inside one of those old abandoned Soviet nuclear power plants and you need to use their input equipment somehow, ASRock made sure to include one of these ancient PS2 ports. Then to finish up the I.O. section, we also got a little button in the very center, which acts as a BIOS flashback button. An important thing to note is that the B660 board still comes with the usual 2.5 gig Intel Killer Network chip as any other Intel 12th gen board. And that's really nice, though I think the auto driver installer feature that we've seen on their Z690 boards should be a default by now, but it, for some reason it just is. Although the B660 chipset prevents the CPU to be overclocked in any way, it still needs to be powered on properly using the single 8-pin EPS connector in the top left corner. Herefore, ASRock uses a 9 power phase design, which is cooled by two large aluminum silverish heatsinks in the usual Steel Legend design. Even if I've probably said it a dozen times now, yes, it is, this is a LGA 1700. Still. The RAM was not covered for now though. The 4DDR4 slots on here allow for up to 128 gigs of Google Chrome anti-Alzheimer medicine while supporting up to 5333 MHz speeds. On the PCIe side, we will now start to see the actual cost of B660 versus B690. Two PCIe 6NX slots and two PCIe 1X slots. For the two 6NX slots, one of them will always be capable of running at Gen 5x16 speed 
where the second one will be throttled down to Gen 4 times 2 speeds. The mini PCIe 1X slots are Gen 3 times 1, no, no matter what you do. For the M.2 slots, we are looking at two Hyper M.2 slots running at Gen 4 times 4 speeds and one M.2 supporting either SATA 6 gig or Gen 3.2 speeds. While we are already covering the storage, on the right side and the bottom side of the motherboard, we will find a total of six SATA 6 gig slots, all of which work unless you will be putting a SATA M.2 into the M.2's underscroll 2 slot. For the front I.O. and every other type of expansion, we've got one USB 2.0 header, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, and one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C header. And of course, the usual front audio and front panel connector. For cooling, we've got a surprisingly large amount of fan headers, a total of 7 PVM to be exact, one CPU fan header in the top and a water pump header not far from it, with the water pump header being able to push 2 amps instead of only 1. And then we've got the leftover 5 case fan header spread all across the board, ready to be used for whatever you wanted to use. With everything important out of the way, let's get to the eye candy. In total, there are 4 RGB headers on the B660 Steel Legend, 1 4-pin non-addressable and 3 3 pin addressable RGBs. The 4 pin and a 3 pin being placed in the bottom while, while there are two 3 pin at the top, like right next to each other. Like Splitters exist, right? Ignoring that one logical error, let's go to a design error. The board itself is basically a black PCB with a bunch of camouflage like shapes spread all across it in a white and kind of gray. Stylish. The same applies for the heat sinks of the VRMs and the chipset and the upper M.2 slots and everything is like kind of very steel legendy stuff, everything is okay. But to make it better it got RGB. By illuminating a bit behind the board and through the chipset heatsink we get a little light show that kind of makes us forget that you are unable to properly use a 12900K on this thing. But the, the part that, that really bugs me is the this theoretically beautiful steel legend cutout which glows and as nice as i think that the cutout is once the board is installed there will always be that bloody 24 pin cable running over that damn thing the worst part is that asrock really made sure to have all of this area cleared for that cutout and, and, and for that thing but then they they break it by routing the 24 pin over it while it makes sure that it is literally impossible to see it? Why did they not like... That would have made so much more sense. Anyway, ignoring that little faux pas, the board seems to be equipped perfectly fine for its potential use case. Sure, it's a B660 and it doesn't allow for any overclock, but considering that there are people out there who do not try to hammer the hardware with as much current as they can, we need just to kind of realize that a B660 board is perfectly fine for probably most people out there. Anyway, for my part, this should be it for the overview about the ASRock B660C Legend. I hope you found what you were looking for and at this point a huge thank you to ASRock for sending it over. I'm sure we'll have many places where this can be put into good use and look very cool. And yes, for now I only have a 12900K, so yes, I will probably have some sort of build shown somewhere where I stuff a B660 with a K CPU. I know it's it's wrong, I know that. I just don't have an alternative. So don't be too hard on me for that. Anyway, I, I digress. Thank you for watching, and if you want to keep watching, have a look at our ASRock Z690 PG Ritter overview. And I hope to see you in the next one, and bye bye.